Hello and welcome to Digi Tales. We are finally entering our third season, and this is our forty-sixth episode overall. My name is Fazan Sayed, the founder and CEO of East River. And today, I have an extremely interesting guest. His name is Adnan Gandhi. He is an endurance athlete. He is the co-owner of Core Gym, which is one of the best gyms in Karachi. I'd say it's one of the best gyms in the country in Pakistan. But what's interesting is he's run eleven marathons including in cities like New York, San Francisco, Dubai, Istanbul, and even in Karachi. He's done four triathlons, the Dubai Ironman twice. He's done the Muscat Ironman once, and he's done the Hunza Olympic distance in winter 2018. And what's more interesting than that, Adnan was never always a fitness guy because he was once upon a time a banker with Bank of America. How are you, Adnan? Hey, how are you, Faisal? So banker turns endurance athlete and a gym owner. This is a story you need to tell me. How did this happen? You just yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sure, sure. Yeah, I was actually I was just right place, right time. So I went to school just outside Chicago, and I was in you know finance, IT, the whole IT boom in the finance industry. And from Chicago, I got lucky enough to get picked up to a bank in New York. Right, so I worked at JP right. Morgan, Bank of America. So I did a little bit of finance, a little bit of IT, but I got very lucky. This is around 2000 to 2006. Okay. And where the luck, the luck comes in, this is when the gym industry just exploded. It went from being right. multi-million to close to trillion dollar industry, right? So yeah. what Soul Cycle spinning, Equinox gyms, 24 hour setups, you know, it went proper corporate, right? So I was there and being in the financial industry, you see this and it becomes mm -hmm. part of your lifestyle. So I'll give you mm -hmm. a small example. You know, when, when even in 2009, when the mortgage crisis was happening, I was working mm -hmm. in that industry. I was showering at home maybe once a week. I'd wake up, I'd go to the gym or I'd run, shower at the gym, go to work, go for a run, go back to the gym, shower there, eat there, come home. So when I looked at my lifestyle, I realized that I'm not the only one doing it. Fitness became... A stress relief fitness became something that's happening and the industry caught on to that mm -hmm. i was very fortunate i got to see that exponential rise and being from financial and having that banking background and having that it background i got to see both sides of it right so when i would visit pakistan post-marriage now i hadn't set foot mm -hmm. in this country for 17 years you grew years. up throughout you were you were basically based in america throughout yeah, no. So I, I was born here in Pakistan, uh, right. two years. Then parents moved. I did UK for until my A-levels, and I did college and um, job afterwards. So right. evenly split. When I got married, married, I we got married here, and I saw the opportunities here. Hmm. This isn't this isn't a monetary opportunity. I'm talking just we're talking. You know, the market was wide right open. It was right. People just didn't even explore this before. It's not about market and exploitation. It's more about there was so much interest, pent up interest, where people right. wanted to do more. They wanted other things to do. So I saw an opportunity here, and I got very fortunate. An uh, in-law of mine already had a female a women's only gym here in KDA, mm -hmm. which is where Core comes from, right? So I'm a co-owner, but Shima Sultan is the founder of it. Mm -hmm. So we started talking. She would come and stay with us in New York and do her training. One thing, one thing led to another, and it just seemed like a fantastic opportunity. And so you jumped in and you got into the gym thing. But what's more interesting is that then over the next few years, you know, you, you got into the, the business of fitness, but you also got into endurance training. Tell me more about how living in Pakistan, you suddenly decided to jump on the Ironman bandwagon. And then that's not easy for those of you watching. Let me, you know, sort of explain Ironman. You know, it is, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, two kilometers of swimming followed by 90 kilometers of a bike ride followed by a half marathon of running. You're absolutely right. And in fact, I'm going to correct you. That's a half Ironman. I'm not even that's a full a, Ironman. I'm well, a that's half. A half, yeah, that's a 70.3 half Ironman. So some people spend their entire lives training for a marathon, right? So we all understand a marathon, 42.2 right. kilometers or 26.2 yes. miles of running. Correct. Imagine, so any triathlon in the world is, is swim, bike, run. Correct. Just the running component of an Ironman is a marathon. Wow. 
Wow, so that's crazy. I've done several half Ironman, and the next step is a full. So when I first came here, what I saw was people running, people running in parks, Samzuma Park, Auntie Park, and just Nisar right. Shahid, you know, this, the, the NCC Stadium. But what, everybody had the same problem that, no, 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 we can't train here and go anywhere else. We're limited to where we can do, what time we can do it. Right. And my challenge was, why are we limited? Why should we be limited? We just have to get organized, right? Running yeah. in, running on Seaview at six o'clock in the morning is no different to running on the West Side Highway in New York City. In fact, Absolutely. I would argue, I would argue it's more polluted and more dangerous to run on West Side Highway, New York City, and I did it for I did it for twelve years. That at any time I have run on Seaview. Mine is stray more, dogs. There's no stray dogs on the West Side Highway. I can assure yeah, you that. <laughs> we, well, you know, but, but but see that but that's a great community story, right? It, it was a right. problem. We addressed it as a community, and there hasn't been any issues, right? So so I the, my biggest challenge was, and I think I wrote this I wrote this to you that in the beginning it was tough. What happened and was what year? so. So I ran my first marathon when I moved to Pakistan in 2015, right? My wife was pregnant. Okay. The gym was about to open. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I got to do something. I, I remember, I, I'm not from here, right? I may be right. born here. I'm not from here. Didn't have any friends here. Didn't have any. Right? So I just decided to train by myself. I would run 30 loops of Zanzama Park. 30 loops, oh, 32 yeah. loops, 40 loops. I would literally put two friends on both sides and pay them, yeah. please give me water. So yeah. once I did that, I felt the frustration that people felt. Right. I felt that same frustration that we felt before malls opened, right? I felt that yeah, same yeah. frustration. So what I did was in 2016, got together with one or two other friends who said, yes, we want to, we want to train for this marathon you ran in the Bay, two hours mm -hmm. flight away, and we got together and ran it. So there's only four or five of us in the very beginning. And that but grew six years ago. Yeah, six years ago, 2016, I would, or even 2018, only three of us ran the Istanbul Marathon. So the growth yes. was flat for a while. The interest right. was there, but the growth, and you know, and this goes for any society, whether it's Chicago, or New York, or London. The thought of waking up at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, five days a week. It's, just, it's scary. I mean, I've been doing it hard, for the last few, few, I think, two weeks now, and I still am not used to it. <laughs> because you have to sleep early. There's a lot of adjustments. Yes. So that's an lifestyle Exactly. It's a lifestyle and cultural change as opposed to just, can I take on this huge achievement? So yeah. what we did was we made use of the silver lining of COVID. What was the silver lining mm -hmm. in COVID? Everyone went outdoors. Everyone was running outdoors, biking outdoors, parks were populated. We saw a 300% increase in just the running club that we have. And our running club is not a fitness club. It's a club where you come, CV running club, you mm -hmm. come, you sign up for a race and we train you for a race. End of story. We're not here to make your waistline smaller. We're not here to help you fit into better clothes. Our job is simply to prepare you for races. End of story whether that race is in Hunza or that race is in Istanbul or LA, we don't care. So imagine a race target goal oriented club grew 300% in wow. COVID. So that's where we, and since then we haven't looked back, right? Very and and so like people who joined, you're saying the people who joined in COVID then went on. So if you were three of you in a race before, how many ended up signing up for races then after that? In 2020, um, in February, right? So a lot of it had already, had already started happening in 19. So 2018, right. when we did the Istanbul Marathon, we got a lot of help from various uh, media agencies. There was, there was definitely an explosion there that happened. In 2018, we also did our first half Ironman, right? So 18 okay. was a big year where there was a lot of awareness raised. Right. Three of us did the Ironman. Three of us did Istanbul Marathon. I did the Hunza. In 19, a lot of us trained. Believe it or not, 35 people got off a plane in Dubai in February 2020 to run the Dubai wow. Half Ironman. So us plus our families literally took up an entire wow. plane. Wow, 35 right? people went from here to the Half Ironman, huh? To the Half Ironman in Dubai. And how many Instead participants of, from uh, Karachi? I'd say maybe 30 out of those 35. Right. 30 participants so, for the half yeah. Ironman. Yeah, for the half Ironman. It was phenomenal. Right. Very three to 30 within two years. That's amazing. 
And we're talking people that know each other on a first name basis. And this is a half Ironman. I mean, like, again, this is a half marathon, a 90 kilometer bicycle ride and a two kilometer swim. You're saying you found 30 people who have never actually from Barachi been and doing any of this. Yeah, that's amazing. We what spent, a, we spent a, six story. months, six months of their lives doing it, right? So let, let's let, let, let's put a twist on this, right? Remember, we, we have to realize that we have some of the best winters in the world. Correct. One of the best winters in the world, right? Go to talk to anyone from Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad. Winters are the best. All their family Absolutely. and friends come over from wherever they live, right, in the west. So from November onwards, you're talking November, December, January. You've got 90 days of near perfect weather. For training. So to, to train. So if I prepare you for a February, March race, it's actually not that difficult. It's actually better than those same three months in any of the cities I talked about. Yeah. Right? Or Whether even right now, even, trying to do a race in September, October and preparing now with all the humidity and the heat. I mean, that's tough. Yeah. So from that perspective, we have a massive advantage. And this is where my thought process came in. When I did 15 by myself, I said, wait a minute, this is actually quite easy. It's just I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. I tried to apply that logic to the people that we were talking to about why should you do February races, mm -hmm. right? So like this year, it's 2022. I'm going to do four races for the first time in my entire life, despite all the places I've lived in, right? Did two races already. And mm -hmm. there's, there's another marathon happening in Karachi in December, mm -hmm. a full mm -hmm. marathon. And I'm going to go off to London in two months to do a race. It means I, I trained for four races right here in, in Karachi. Wow. And, and you think you're doing another Iron, half Ironman in Dubai? So, so you know, it's, it's the bug that everyone wants, right? And yeah. I want to admit, I, we are, I want to focus on doing a full now, right? Okay, got it. Yeah. My, my target is to qualify for the Boston Marathon through a marathon and then now move on next year and do a full Ironman. So a full Ironman should take me between 11 to 13 hours. 11 to 13 to So what is the distances you have to cover in a full Ironman? Right, so your swim is uh, 3.8 kilometers. Wow. Okay, 3.8 kilometers. Just and is this an open swim. water or in a swimming pool or where? It's always open water. So think of it right. this way. For, for people who don't understand distances, that's about 160 laps in a pool. That's quite a lot of laps. Okay. It despite, yeah. So despite, yeah. it doesn't matter what size your pool is. You're talking yeah. between 140 to 200 yeah. laps yeah. in a pool. Non-stop, right? Non-stop. Then you are looking at 180 kilometers of biking. So anyone from Karachi, Karachi to Karo, Karo. And back yeah. is only 140. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that plus more, right? right. Then when all that is done, you then tr you then run a full marathon, a full marathon, which could take anywhere between three to five hours, right? Well, why would anyone want to do this? I mean, you know, we're okay with a 30 minute workout in a gym. Why, why do we need this? Why is there an entire population of people around the world that have subscribed to this, trained for this, and have turned this into a community. What, what's it, what is it about this endurance racing? Absolutely. It's a very good question, right? So what happens with anything you, so, you know, as, as a member of the fitness faculty and on the business side of it, my saying is always the same that once you, the worst thing about getting into shape is getting into shape, <laughs> right? Because then everything starts changing. Yeah. And you yeah. start changing, whether it's your sleep, your family, your food. So eventually you lose focus of why you're doing it, right? So my focus or our focus has always been have a target. So even yourself, right? Come on, you and I have been friends a while. Yeah. For years I've told you, don't yeah. worry about training. Go online, pay for the race. Once you have that date in mind, you're good to go, right? So I've got October 2nd. It's looming over me, right? Like right. an umbrella like a dark cloud, I have to get in London to run the marathon. I just went to see my folks in Virginia, in, in the US, mm -hmm. and on holiday, I ran 120 kilometers, right? Wow. So, so it was a great vacation, I, whatever it was, but that's where, that's the difference between race training, having that race focus, right? So yeah. think of that as the stepping stone, what I'm talking about. Then you start getting into 
the whens and the wheres and the you know look let's be fair no one I, I don't want to win it but if i if my achievement is the difficulty behind it that's yeah. what counts and you said that you changes you right i mean it changes the way you behave it changes what you eat it changes the way you live your life you know walk me through some of those i mean i'm experiencing it as as we speak because i mean just like you know i've only done this what maybe the last 2 3 weeks i've actually 10 times i counted today i've done 10 times since i came back from holiday that i've been waking up at 5 5:30 and doing either the run the swim or the bike right and I'm noticing some changes, but this is just 10 days, so I'm not going to count that. Okay. What changes cr- are created over the long term that you see if you get into this kind of a lifestyle? So, look at what I just spoke about, right? I just come back from a holiday. When you have this lifestyle, when you when you when you step off and you do get out of shape a little bit, or you lose some of that fitness. or a life event happens right we've all mm-hmm. had you know because of covid everyone's got some sort of story right mm-hmm. getting back on and getting back in shape and getting healthy again is easier to do right so because your 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 focus is endurance right someone mm-hmm. this morning when we when we met to run said something very interesting to me and i hadn't used this terminology before he said to me at now you've been away for 3 weeks you're running protect the saturday run protect the saturday run what that means is whatever you do during the week don't expand yourself make sure you get one quality run on on the saturday why because that's when everyone gets together and you can test yourself so if i have to do 42 kilometers in 2 months i'm going to test myself and do 30 or 35 this week and it makes sense right it's no different to going to school you study all year for the final right but you don't just show up and do the final there are various tests that happen during the year sure. before you get to the final yep endurance endurance the, the endurance sport teaches you that monday to friday that we are everything there's variety there's different things that happen and once a week you get to test yourself not once a year not once a month every single week you get to do that one test but i mean that test is like you know i mean we live in a city where this is a late city right it starts late everything's late here you know and nothing's on time so it's late to begin with and nothing's ever on time and you're saying you want someone to sort of step into this new lifestyle of 5 5:30 in the morning in the summers because there's no other cooler time to run and that means you have no social life because you have to get at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep to rest the muscles if you want to run 10 15 20 kilometers in the week and or if, let's say you're preparing for race 30 how do you find that kind of commu- how do you get that commitment i mean that's i think a lot of people struggle with that challenge of how do they make that commitment you said make the payment you know sign up for the race but even then the struggle of saying you know what i have to give up that lifestyle of you know sort of being with friends and family in the evening and wake up in the morning when there's no one awake except this little community Do you think this Absolutely. community helps and drives you towards that, or else how else do you you make it happen? No, I agree with you, right? So I'm going to give you some cheats that my my fitness fraternity will will probably out me on. <laughs> If I'm let's take running, just running, right? If right. I'm running four days a week, Monday's a recovery run, fairly easy. Tuesday sprinting, fairly difficult. Wednesday and Thursday is another easy run, and then we're left with the hardest run, which is Saturday. So now what I've told you is two easy runs and two difficult runs. Those difficult runs just like anything difficult in life require better better preparation. So right. Saturday is a difficult run, right? Which means tomorrow night, not tonight. Tomorrow Friday night I'm going to have a very disciplined meal. I'm going to eat well all day and I'll sleep early. But I'm not going to sleep early tonight. Don't have to, right? So when you break it down, if I'm giving you 7 days, I'm only asking for two and two two in return. Two out of seven is not terrible, right? Mm. I'm not. I'm not advocating you show up to a Monday run on four hours of sleep, but you don't need the eight. If if you're going to bend the rules a little bit, you can do it on the days where there's an easier run. That's where this sport gives you that variety. In fact, we don't want you to work. You don't. We don't need you to run, go uh, all out every single day. Right. we need you to have easy runs, hard runs, fast runs, hill runs, 
So that's where, when you start looking at that, that the, that's kind of the intangible that no one talks about, right? So I you're actually only asking for two days of the week. You're saying that make two days of the week your discipline days and yeah. commit and go to sleep early, eat well and so on. That's 22 it. years. I've done this for 22 years. My first marathon was this is doable. Uh, in, in the year 2000, right? And okay. I lived in New York and they, 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 they don't sleep at all. At least you yeah. guys go to sleep at some point, right? Yeah. So <laughs> that's, a city, that's a city that never sleeps, right? True. So the point I'm just trying to say is I agree with you. We can't ignore the pain of running after four hours of sleep. I'm not advocating do it, but I'm also telling you that I've done it for 22 years and I've never had eight hours of sleep for every single run. But I do do it for the two runs that matter every week. And what, when you say that these are the two runs that matter, is there a reason that these two intense runs will contribute more than, let's say, you know, the the other two that are just the easy runs? Is there a function of intensity? And so, if let's say we only decide to do just those two runs, do we need to do the other two runs? Do we have to make it four times a week? I mean, is there, you know, is there an easier because cheat? Can we cycle instead? Can we swim? Can we do something else? No, right? Because look, you're going to be in that marathon and your body, your ligaments, your knees, everything is going to be moving, physically moving for four to five hours, maybe three mm -hmm. to five hours, but depending on who you are. That's a lot of movement. You can't just sure. show up and have not trained that. Your body has to understand that level of workload. Right, your body right. has to understand that level of workload, and that doesn't happen in just two runs. So just forget the running. Just think of it in terms of you're out there four hours a week, four hours over a week, and we're asking you to do four hours nonstop in one go. The, yeah, that's the, yeah. The train, the, the training just has to be there. It just has to be there, right? So we ask for four runs minimum. Each one can be around an hour. But that Saturday run matters, right? And that Saturday, mm. see, you have to understand the human body, whether you're, I'm 45, and there's a guy in our group who's, who's 18. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what age you are, your body will break down, rebuild itself. So it works like this, right? You break it down, it gets stronger. You break it down, it gets stronger. Eventually, you go from here to here. But it happens over time. But if you don't break it down, how's it going to get stronger? Your body and has to that, know. And, and I was going to say, like, you, you mentioned the age part of it, right? Does that matter? I mean, shouldn't it be easier for younger people to get trained and to get ready for these races? Or is it the same? Because I see a lot of older sort of, you know, middle-aged people, late 30s, mid 40s, who are trying to, say, let's say, regain their youth or, you know, they need a new hobby or something, right? Um, you don't see a lot of 18-year-olds, at least in this part of the world, getting into marathons. Is the older body harder to train or is it the other way around no it is it is if you'd asked me if, you, if you'd asked me even 15 years ago i i wouldn't have a, an answer for you but it definitely is harder to train because it's harder to recover right okay. so yeah. I, I ran a very hard run this morning if i want a quality run tomorrow i mean on saturday i have to do something to help my recovery tomorrow i can't just get away with doing nothing right Right. And it's, so what would that look like? I'll go for a swim. I may go for a mm -hmm. slow six, six kilometer ride, run. I may go for a bike ride. I have to do something, right? The only thing that helps. So if my muscles break down, the only thing that's going to help my muscles recover is more blood, right? There's enrichment mm -hmm. in the blood. The only thing that pumps more blood to that muscle is my heart, which is what cardiovascular is. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can let it be and maybe I'll get 80% recovery by Saturday morning. But if I do a little bit of just, just mild cardiovascular activity, more blood will go to that muscle that hurts and mm -hmm. it'll repair it 100%. So why wouldn't I want a 100% repaired muscle by Saturday? Why would mm -hmm. I want to operate on an 80% repaired muscle? So your 18-year-old, without doing anything, is repairing faster. Think of it like Wolverine, right? Got it. <laughs> he or she okay. is more on the Wolverine yeah. side. We're not. And does weight training help? Because, I mean, we've talked a lot about sort of the run side of it and the, the cardio side of it. But what part or what role does resistance training play in preparing for, let's say, a marathon or maybe even one of those Ironman endurance races? 
immensely, immensely, right? So let's stick with our let's, let's stick with our biology one on one over here that we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. My muscle needs blood. My heart's going to give it blood, right? That's what heart rate is, right? Now, mm -hmm. if my muscle is weak, it's going to demand more blood. The only way it's getting more blood is by raising my heart. So I'm going to start tiring out, right? If that muscle is strong, it requires less. So mm. why wouldn't you want your heart to work less so that when I push, I, I can get more. It's about efficiency, right? The other is, this is a, it, let's not forget, this is a brutal sport, right? You're talking about mm -hmm. putting your leg down and powering through for three, four hours at a time. I, yeah. for Ironman, I was training between 24 to 36 hours a week. A week. 24 to 36 hours a while. Wow, that's a lot. A week. A week. So that's right? five hours a day. Five hours a day. And some days, maybe three hours, and the other days, six hours, right? So the yeah. total that was popping up, my average was about 26 hours a week for 12 weeks, right? Now, that's not going to happen by just eating well. That's not going to happen by just getting cryotherapy and massages and yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. That's going to happen because I prepared the muscle. I move my arm, that muscle contracted and the arm moved up, right? So right. if I can make this muscle stronger, it'll yeah. move and it won't tire. It's very simple. The more yeah, so tired I is, am. So that means then in your four days, so like you just gave an example of, let's say the two intense runs and the two easy runs, where does the muscle training come into? Where does the resistance training get built into this kind of a schedule? Every single day afterwards. Right. Oh, so, so there is, you have to actually go to the gym and lift weights after this. Twice. Yeah. So, the, so my routine is very simple, right? My routine is very simple. It's cardio in the morning, swim, bike or run. And then around three, 4 PM, I then do weight training or five, 6 PM, whatever. Right. So every single day, there is two sessions that happen irrespective. Sometimes in the morning, there are what we call bricks bricks where you're doing a bike run combination or a swim run combination, some sort of double cardio combination. It's called bricks. Why? It doesn't, it doesn't stand for anything. It just means okay. your legs feel like bricks, yeah. right? Okay. So, <laughs> Got it. That's all. I mean, I'd love to give you an, a fancier acronym, that is, right? It's just called bricks where your legs yeah. literally feel like bricks. Interesting. And so now you're doing this twice a day. Then there's another question that pops up as I'm thinking about it. There's the lifestyle issue. How do you find the time? Five hours, three hours? I mean, just let's say an average of four hours a day. I mean, you know, people have work, people have families, kids, all of that stuff. How do you extract time out of your day, four hours, every single day, up onto a race for 90 days to commit to this? In my 10 hours, in my, sorry, in my 10 years of being married, I never got home to not also make breakfast for the family and drop my son to school, ever. So there's a reason why. So it's not just about Karachi. Forget Karachi, forget Pakistan's weather. We mm -hmm. wake up at 4.30 all over the world. Everyone wakes up mm -hmm. at their respective 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning so that we are out there doing our one hour of training and we're home by 6.45, 7 o'clock every day so that our families aren't disturbed so that we can let them continue doing what they're doing. Yes, my breakfast may only be 15 minutes long. Yours may be an hour long. I may mm -hmm. lose that 45 minutes of quality time with my family over breakfast Monday mm -hmm. to Friday, but I don't disturb the schedule, right? And mm -hmm. I'm the only one of my, our group. In our group, we have about 35, 36 race training members right now. And I may be one of maybe five or six who are self-employed. Everybody else has a job. You got to be there, nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we're all doing it. So there's a reason why this, this happens all over the world. You have, to, you, have, you have to also remember how easy this is, right? I could be, you know, I just went to the US and I literally had a backpack, pair of shoes, shorts, t-shirt, that's it. it. Running is the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, it's, the easiest, sure. it's the easiest sport yeah. in the world. Yeah. It just is. I mean, in fact, I, sh I shove most of my gear into my shoes. <laughs> so I'm, mm. but it's the easiest of the easiest, right? So if you can stay organized, then you're good to go. Ha, huh. the challenge comes in the evenings, right? You've mm. got to get that weight training in. And I will say this, like I said, I'll say it again. If I, if I wasn't actively involved in the industry from both the business side and from participant side 
without weight training, you are asking for trouble. You really are. Really? Right? And, yeah. And, so and you don't and think that will... anyone should run a marathon or compete in an Ironman without weight training? When I do a marathon, I do legs twice a week. When I do Ironman, I do legs three days a week. It's a lot of legs. You, you, and you, legs are tough. <laughs> It is, right? That's a lot of sore legs. Right. So uh, I'll, I'll rewind to a question you asked me. Why yeah. and why and how? In 2016 and 17, what I saw were a lot of people going to the gyms, a lot of people active, a lot of fit people. I'm not I'm not saying we weren't doing something. You know, we come from a we come from a World Cup winning community, you know, World Cup mm -hmm. at, we got elite athletes in other sports. So it's not like we don't know what we're doing. We are. It, what I saw was the lack of progression. I want people to go and do a marathon, any marathon, come back, have a bug to improve on that time. Mm. So our whole thing was to build a community where, so look, Dubai, direct flight. Istanbul, direct flight. Abu Dhabi, mm. direct flight. Mm. We always encourage people to do these, lo what we call local marathons first. Get them out of the way. Mm. Now we talk about the tougher stuff. Hmm. This year, this year, our community is putting people. So previously, we've only ever done Istanbul, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. That's hmm. it. This year, Chicago, Berlin, New York, London, London, Dubai, Oman. I think Amsterdam Chicago. too, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, and Amsterdam. We are, yeah. we, we, by the end of this year, our community... Not my club, our community, just here in Karachi, right. is going to put people, Pakistanis are going to finish with respectable times. None of this, I barely made it times. Respectable, right. accredited times in these six cities' major marathons. And half of the ones I just mentioned, you have to qualify for. You can't oh, wow. just show up and buy a ticket. Yeah. So we, this is... This is this is answers your other question. The why? Why would you continue doing it? That's why. Because you just want the progression. You once your bug is bitten, you just want to keep going up and up and improving and improving. Right. That's where the club. That's where the club helps. The club mm. helps. Yeah, like you have that camaraderie. You have that competition. You have that. I'm never gonna mm. come up to you and tell you your BMI or your waistline is the reason to do an Ironman. I'm gonna show you pictures of me holding a flag. And being mm. chaired on by ten thousand people. That's how we get mm. to it, right? You know, mashallah, mashallah, we last year when I that twenty twenty race that I'm talking about, more so they uh, before an Iron Man they do this whole like pasta dinner and they introduce all the rules. More Pakistanis stood up when they mentioned Pakistan than all of India, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh combined. Combined. Really? Wow. Combined. Even the race organizers were probably, and just imagine what I told you in 2020, four of us stood up, and one yeah. of us was a, Chica a Chicagoan. How many four people Pakistani typically people. participate in this? Like, I mean, let's say if there's a Dubai Ironman, half Ironman happening, how many people, how many entrants are there? I, this is one of my favorite questions. I'm glad you're asking, right? Yeah. So, so just like I talked about the distances, here's where, here's yeah. where it becomes really fun, right? A half Ironman is capped at 2,000 people, right? And uh, yeah. Ironman is a brand. You can't have more than 2,000 people. So the Dubai Ironman sells out in about eight hours. Sometimes it wow, sells okay. out in three hours. It's that right. difficult to get into. The Oman one that myself, Migdad, um, Alex, Ali, that we did, didn't sell out. It's just such a impossibly difficult race. They got barely 600 people there. So really? okay. all these factors make a difference, right? Yeah. I'm going to London this year. So all marathons are the same. 40,000 people. You can't have more than 40,000 people. Right. That's, okay. that's an official marathon. Right. But now, why did you rank, let's say, these European marathons higher than, let's say, the Middle Eastern marathons? Two reasons. It's terribly difficult to get into. Right. Okay. Terribly difficult to get into. I spent 20 years. I haven't got into London. Right. And I grew up in London. 20 years. Right. And I haven't got in. And I got in this year. Right. Thanks. Thanks. To, thanks to TCF. Right. Mm, uh, the school charity. And the other is weather. You train like crazy for months. You make all those sacrifices. You make all those life changes, all, all that time you could have spent with your family and friends. And you go to this race, and two hours into the race, it is so hot that it saps the energy out of you. 
So yeah. as much as, as much as I'm, uh, we are an advocate of going to our local Middle Eastern races, that isn't where you're going to go test yourself. Cooler weather, cooler temperatures, uh, better organized races, all those small, small factors start adding up, right? right. Um, the best race I've ever, I've ever been to, you will not believe it, is San Francisco despite how crazy that sounds with the hills. Yeah. I And only 6,000 people ran it out of 40,000 people. Was people San Francisco happy. can get chilly also. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not best, like which is, pleasant which is brilliant, weather. Right? Which is the brilliant. 60s. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's for running. It's brilliant. There's a reason why all the world records fall in Berlin, because it's cold. There's a reason why the world records fall in Chicago. It's November in Chicago. That's cold. That's Chicago. proper cold. Yeah. Proper cold. So, so the marathon culture, when you start in the race, even in Istanbul, we stood there over the Bosphorus on the bridge. I wore three layers, a sweatshirt, a long sleeve shirt, a short sleeve t-shirt. And on the fourth layer was my actual shirt for the marathon. So as you start running, you layer, you throw it off, you throw it off, you throw it right. off. That's what you want. That's what you want. Right. And you don't get that in these marathons in this part of the world. So you're never going to set the record. You never push yourself. Just completing the race in itself is the achievement. So uh, exactly. That's my point, right? So we want to be very careful how we set this up, right? What I always want for anyone who's starting off is just focus on finishing it. What yeah. you don't want to do is get on a 14-hour flight with all the gear yeah. and this and this. Make it, make it as convenient as possible. Get the achievement done. Get the finishing done. Now let's move on. Now... When I asked you to run harder on a Thursday, you yeah. know why you have to do it because you didn't do it last time and you want that power. So in the 30th kilometer, instead of feeling weak, you feel strong. So mm. those, those, the questions that you're asking are all pertinent, relevant questions. The answer to that is the cheesiest answer in the world, experience. Mm. You know, it just The more you do it, the more you understand it. Yeah, but what we try to do is we, we, we map it out. I always want people to at least try two or three different races. Try two mm -hmm. or three different races, but have a, have, a, have a method to that madness. Got it. And it is and madness, so, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and so if someone wants to start, I mean, let's say someone's like, you know what, I've watched this, Adnan, I really want to start this. What's the next step? Let's say they just finished watching this video and they're like, I want to jump in on this bandwagon and I want to sign up for Karachi or I want to sign up for the next race that's happening. What is the next step from this moment that they need to take? There are three major races occurring right here in Karachi in the next six months. We have a um, sports in Pakistan full marathon occurring December 25th. Okay. We have the TCF marathon happening Ju January 22nd. And yeah. then the annual half marathon that the Special Olympics Pakistan uh, folks host I think in February, and they've done that for seven years in a row, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got you've got these three races you can prepare for. They all have a 10K option, a half marathon option, and a full option, all of them, mm -hmm. right? So my first thing to everybody would be take three weeks. Try to see if your body can run for an hour, four days a week, not four hours in a row. Just give yourself an hour. Run one Monday, hour, four take days a week. One hour. You want to get yourself to start being able to run 35 to 45 minutes nonstop is your initial aim. Whether you do that by yourself, whether you do that with a group, that's, that's entirely up to you. I will always advocate running with a group. It, it just helps. Oh, it pushes you. I mean, just when you're fading and the person next to you just is running, they say, let's go. I mean, that in itself is just all you need. We ran this morning. I did yeah. not see anyone next to you for 10 kilometers. I'm afraid to say this. Not a yeah. single person. Yet, I saw plenty of people, maybe 20 people, high-fiving you and giving you a thumbs yeah. up every single time. So you tell me, did it help you or not? Oh, I mean, I kept going. I mean, just when I would slow down or I would fade, I would see someone they'd be like, they just do this. And that's all I did. And I just picked back up. And, and I, I was able to complete 10K. And this is the second time I'm doing it. Yeah. On a hill, on, on a hill. hill. Yeah. And I, and you don't have to answer this question now, but I guarantee you don't even know half the names of the people that said hi to you this morning. 
Hey, I don't have to answer that question. But that, <laughs> that's the motivation. Yeah, that I is the agree. motivation. So I know, and I, I give you credit for that. You built the community. I think the community is what is the real driver here, right? Like, I mean, anyone can try to do this on their own. And you can read and you can watch the videos and you can get all the information you need. But when it comes down to prepping, you know, having that community by your side, I think that is, you know, from what I've seen and at least experienced in the last 10 days, what you've built over the last few years, this community, I think is your greatest achievement, Thank you know, you. and the fact that this community is growing with time and that we are getting this as a hobby, as a pastime, which is such a healthy way of living, you know, credit to you for making this happen, Adnan. I think this is a huge achievement. And in a city of, let's say, what, 20 odd million people, the fact that we now have 35 people, let's say, going into a race and hopefully we'll have more and we'll 10x this is, is, is amazing, you know, for someone who's never lived here before. So well done. And with that, I think we're a little done with time. Um, thanks a lot, Adnan. Thanks for joining and for sharing the guidance on how to prepare for an endurance race, what to look out for a marathon. And for those of you who uh, you know, want to know what the next steps are, I think you should log into the Core Gym website and sign up and start getting your fitness training going and jump in on this journey. Come join the CV Running Club uh, in the morning and uh, see what that community is like and try this new lifestyle. I think it's, it's wonderful. I've been testing it out for the last 10 days and it's been amazing. Thanks, Adnan. Yeah. Thanks again for the time. No problem. Thank you so much. Cheers. And thank you for tuning in. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.